8.4, lines of best fit. Lines of best fit can be used to make predictions. The accuracy and reliability of those predictions will depend on the strength of the correlation between the two variables. Let's look at what this means with an example. All okay. right, draw a line of best fit for the points in the following scatter diagram. Here we can see maybe they're clear for you, hopefully anyway. We've got X's marking these points. Okay, this is all data that's been graphed on this plot. And so what we want to do is make a line of best fit. So basically we've got to eyeball it. We have to sort of get, uh, estimate, yeah, roughly somewhere around here and then it goes through. Uh, I don't know exactly. What we're trying to do is get as many, the same amount on top as below. Right now we can see four on top, four below, and it seems to sort of evenly go through all of this data, right? It's never going to be perfect, but you want to make it as close as possible to sort of evenly distribute. You see some are far away, some here are far away below, but most of them are somewhat close, right? And then the closer the data is to the line, uh, the better this estimation is going to be. And that's what we were talking about up here with the, uh, the correlation between the variables. So here the correlation is pretty good. There's not too many that are too far away, one above, one below that are sort of out there, but it's fine. And so now we can use this data to answer some questions or a question. Predict the value of y when x equals 12. Okay, so when x equals 12, we can just follow 12 up here until it hits the line, right? It hits our prediction right there, and then we can sort of follow across until it hits here. And that number looks mm, to be about 6.3. I mean, we're predicting here, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So we can say that y is approximately 6.3. Okay? It's a pretty good guess. Example 2. The following data was collected from an experiment. In the experiment, objects of different masses were placed on a horizontal surface, and the force needed to make them start to move was recorded. So just picture a block. Um, with some kind of spring scale and you pull the spring scale and then whatever mass was required to get it going that was recorded and then different masses took different forces to get moving okay so we're gonna plot this data here okay so mass is on the x axis and force is on the y axis so it's 0 0.5 it's 2.1 at 1.0 it's 3.8 at 1.5, it's 6.5. 2.0, it's 7.9. Very close to 8. 3.0, it's 13.2. And at 5.0, it is 19.1. Okay, so we need to make a line of best fit between this Okay, so again, we're estimating. We're trying to get one that's going to fit through here, right? So it's going to be something like this, kind of like that. Okay. Mm, that looks pretty good, right? We want to sort of evenly distribute these dots. One of them ends up being right on it, but evenly distribute them along this line. Okay, now we can use the line to analyze some information. Estimate the force needed for 2.5 kilogram mass. Okay, so 2.5 kilogram mass. So we'll go up until we hit the line, which is right here. And then if we follow across, well, our estimate is about, this is 8, 9, 10, mm, just above 10. Okay, so we can say that approximately the force will be approximately 10 newtons. Okay, and this is called interpolation. When we're getting information from within this line, it's called interpolation. If we were extending the line way out here and we wanted to figure out, hey, uh, with a mass of 10 kilograms, what's the force? That would be extrapolation. But inside is called interpolation. 